This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome to the X-One, everyone. Hour number two for today. Our special guest is Deborah Fru, and uh, we've had the pleasure of having Deborah on the show before. And uh, Deborah grew up in the Chicago suburbs, the second of seven children. She began her search of answers to life's big questions at a young age and studied the world's religions, both ancient and modern, in depth. In 1993, she interviewed the heads of many of the world's religions for a documentary film commemorating the 100th anniversary of the original gathering of Parliament at, of the world's religions at the Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893. Now, it was here that she realized that all roads committed to with honesty and kindness at their core lead to the deep spiritual understanding we all crave and that everyone is always on the path. Deborah is an intuitive coach, certified life coach and Reiki master who travels the world helping others to learn to use their own personal GPS. She is a network uh, teaching, uh, I'm sorry, she is on staff at the Tarot Guild and the North American Psychic and Paranormal Network teaching students on your metaphysical's business web presence. Deborah lives in a log cabin on a lake in a forest a few hours outside of Chicago with her husband Richard. Her website, www.internalwilderness.com. And Deborah Faru, welcome back to the X Zone. How are you, Deborah? I'm great. It's good to talk to you again. Great talking to you. Um, it seems that with all the guests that I talk to, they notice an increased awareness worldwide on something happening at a level that they just can't understand. Is this what we're looking forward to as we spring forward into our new uh, evolutionary tracks? You know, that's a really good question. It seems to me, and it's only because part of my mind is very geeky and the other part of my mind is very woo-woo, um, it seems to me that technology is starting to um wake people's minds up to different possibilities. For example, if you're online and let's say you're on Facebook and you're talking to somebody, you know, chatting in real time, it's almost like reading their minds because you are communicating with somebody that you probably don't even really know. And you're having a conversation and an interaction and a real meaningful uh, give and take with somebody that you don't really know. Look at GPS for your car. Yeah. GPS is something that I really glommed on to because when you set your GPS, you set it to take you somewhere. And you don't think about where am I, you know, in between the directions. If, if the lady says turn left and you turn left and then she doesn't talk to you for another 20 minutes, you don't stress out. You just go along with it. And we're starting to see that our lives can be like this that we don't have to be so micromanaging every second of right. them, that we can trust the universe to turn left when we're supposed to. So we don't follow our intuition. Is that what you're saying? We don't follow... No, I'm saying we do. Uh, oh, I'm we saying do, that's do. Right. what it does. I see. All right, you and I have to take a commercial break. Uh, Deborah, please stand by. Exonation Deborah Fru is our special guest this hour. 
Her website, www.internalwilderness.com. And Deborah and I will be back on the other side of this ooh, two-minute commercial break as we continue from our studios here in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go... This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My Dialogue with Divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called RISE, May 8th through the 12th, 2017, and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha, and I'll see you in mystical Maui. Exxon Nation, Deborah Frew is our special guest of this hour, www.internalwilderness.com. And uh, Deborah, when did you first learn that you were psychic, and what was it like? Well, it's funny. My, my mother tells me that when I was a child, that I used to know things before they happened. Mm-hmm. But when you're a child, you think everybody's like you. Yeah, true. You know, it, you, you, so if I said, Grandpa's going to come over, and Grandpa had, you know, nobody knew Grandpa was coming but mm-hmm. me, and, and people would say, oh, whatever, and then suddenly Grandpa would show up. Well, you know, for me, it's just like, well, that's natural, yeah. and everybody's like me. See, I would have said... we all think that way. See, I would have said, see, I told you. Why don't you ever listen to <laughs> I me? I wasn't <laughs> smart enough. <laughs> Hindsight 2020, right? <laughs> exactly. But as I got older, you know, I, um, you know, got mm-hmm. married, had children and so forth. And I really put everything on the back burner. And again, not realizing that I really had anything going there. But it was when I got divorced that I started to, I, I had this urge to go buy a tarot card deck. Now, I'll tell you, Rob, I've never seen, I had never seen a tarot card deck. Mm-hmm. I had never um had my cards read. I didn't know why I was feeling urged in this way, but I went ahead and bought a deck. And then for two years, I banged my head against the wall trying to figure out what I was supposed to do with them because I couldn't read them worth a darn. So it was sort of like the reawakening do you process. Think, do you think me. we all go through that reawakening during our lives and some people like yourself actually listen and take heed and you know continue that learning process where... I, I'm sure that the majority of people who, who are you know who, who get that awakening just kind of shrug it off and hit the snooze button and and continue with their lives. Well, I think there's a lot of different factors. The first factor is age. Mm. The older we get, um, the more in tune we become, be, just because of life experience. You know, you've seen it a hundred times. Now you see it coming. Yeah. You know, uh, and. Uh, the other thing is, is as you get older, you care less about what other people think. In Isn't fact, you care good, yeah. almost not at all. Mm-hmm. 
and and so you're you're willing to you know entertain a new notion. Besides, you know you've seen about everything life's got to offer, and it's interesting to try something new and try a new way of looking at life. And so I really think as you get older. Now, as when we're younger, I think we get those promptings. But again, it's all about circumstance and, you know, age, I really feel. You know, Deborah, the last time you and I uh, had a conversation, and I think it goes back to uh, July of last year, I remember you calling yourself a skeptic. Now, how can you be skeptical and a psychic at the same time? This is the biggest conundrum of my life. (laughs) But my father, my father, who invented the remote control, a very, very left brain guy, mm-hmm. uh, an electronics engineer, he just, uh, you know, he taught me to be very, very uh, logical and always use logic and common sense first. But he wasn't um, above entertaining notions outside those frameworks. And so he's the one who taught me that you can walk down the road with logic and common sense. Well, you always have to have common sense. Don't ever leave that behind. But you can walk down the road with logic only so far. And then sometimes you just have to kind of let go of its hand, let it sit down on the side of the road and wait for you to get back. Because there are things in this world that logic can't wrap around. And so I think I got it from my dad. But, yeah, I am very skeptical. You know, it's funny. I was thinking of you yesterday because I was watching a video of the um, hurricane. Yes. And they showed a convoy of army trucks. I don't know if you saw this, driving down a street in a flooded town in the Northeast, and the water almost went over the very tops of the trucks. Wow. So it was it was a surreal thing to see, because all you could see were the tops of the trucks. You knew mm-hmm. these were giant trucks. And you're thinking, how can you drive underwater? And I kept looking at it, and my left brain is going, this reminds me of a faked uh, UFO video. Mm-hmm. And, and then my right brain is going, you need to learn a little bit more about what a truck can do in the United States Army. <laughs> so it's, um, I, you know, it's just this constant dance that I do. First, I, I tease out everything I can that's logical and common sense. So, commonsensical about it, and then I'll take it to the next step. What tools do you use uh, when you do your psychic work? Well, primarily because it's the fastest, I use the tarot, and I like the tarot for this reason, Mm -hmm. several reasons. The first one is, although I may have a psychic impression of a situation or um, have an idea of where the whole session is going to go, When you lay down the cards, they nail it for you. They say, first this, then this, then this, then this. And it's a simple story that you tell. And people live their lives in patterns. And so you can see the pattern um, present itself. And it's, it's all very logical. And what I like the most about it is at the end of the session, I can put away the cards and pretty much turn that off. My clients seem to think sometimes that when I'm finished with a session, I'm just constantly taking in impressions of their lives, you know, at all times. No, I'm not. I'm thinking about my life and my children and my grandchildren and my husband, you know, and I'm not thinking about um, everyone else in the world. And that's what the tools are good for. When you take out the tools, then it's all about them. Would you say that using the tarot deck as you do would be the same as other members of the psychic community using a, um, let's see, a crystal ball? Is, do you use it as, a, as a, a, an affirmation tool? I'm not sure what an affirmation tool well, might be. I've heard a lot of different talk mm-hmm. about it. Um, but what I will say is that I think crystal ball reading is a real talent. And technically speaking, you can read anything. Right. If you can read a tarot deck, you can read tea leaves, you can read coffee grounds, you can read muddy puddles, you can read clouds in the sky. It doesn't matter. You can read. Okay. It's just a medium, a focal point, a way to um, verbalize it. So would you use one of those books that a number of tarot card readers use in order to... uh, to, decode the reading or to help understand the reading or do you just use the tarot cards as as the as the point of focus in the reading it's the point of focus i never learned to read them properly 
And I'll, I'll tell you the quick story of that. And, and it's that I had spent two years trying to figure it out, banging my head against the wall, making all my friends sick and tired of me because I couldn't do it. And I was invited to a party and a woman was there reading cards and she was out in the room, but sort of off to the side. And I walked behind her and stood behind her to watch what she was doing. And I knew what the cards were going to say. And I thought, well, that's a change of pace. I know what she's going to say to this other, you know, this uh, client. Right. It turns out that it was all about the deck. It's the deck. If I liked the deck, the deck was about um, Greek mythology. And I like Greek mythology. So I resonated with it. Ah. So it was just like, you know, the difference between um, somebody that you work with and somebody that you choose to be friends with. And the first deck was somebody I worked with. <laughs> the second deck was my friend. Wow. And a lot of readers have a lot of different decks. I don't. I just have one. You know, I've noticed that because uh, we used to do a lot of psychic fairs doing the show. And and there would be tarot card readers there who'd have five, six different decks. And, and I couldn't understand what the significance was. I thought that tarot card readers would have one deck and that would be the one deck that they used. But then uh, I asked one tarot card reader and she said, no, what we do or what I do is I give the person who wants the reading their choice in whichever deck resonates to her or him. That's the deck I use. Well, that works very well for a lot of readers, and mm-hmm. I know plenty of readers that do that. Yeah. It's just not my style because I never learned to read them the textbook way. Yeah. I, I never could figure it out. But when I, it, you know, it's sort of, I, I make this comparison. In the past with the old deck that was my friend from the office that I couldn't really connect with, mm-hmm. that deck was like trying to uh, translate the Bible from the original Greek, okay? And looking at the new deck was like watching television. So why would I use anything else? If it works, if it, you know, if That's it works, right. why, why change it, right? That's right. Don't mess with what works. <laughs> has there ever been that time when somebody has asked you to do a reading and they sit down in front of you and you just draw blanks? Oh, yes. In fact, I teach a class on that <laughs> because it happens to all of us. And there's a lot of different things you can do. I mean, you can, you know, um, take a deep breath and just try and reconnect with your mm-hmm. client and so forth. But really, um, Nine times out of ten, you just have to take the cards away and start all over again. It's it's just that simple. Um, I can say that it's hap- it, I taught a class on it, and during the class, I had to do a reading, and I it came up cold. And so it's fine. You know, sometimes it means that there's all this chaos in front of you in the cards, and there's a lot of chaos in that person's life, and it's quite possible that's the situation, too. But you always want to try and, you know, narrow it down to one story at a time. Sure. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Deborah, please stand by. Exonation. Deborah Fru is our special guest. Her website is internalwilderness.com. Don't forget, uh, this coming February the 17, 18, 19, the Body, Soul, and Spirit Expo at the International Center in Toronto, Ontario. It's actually uh, located at 6900 uh, Airport Road. I'm going to be the master of ceremonies there. Drop by, say hi. We've got the Exxon booth. We're going to be... Uh, having uh, the latest edition of the X Chronicles newspaper and a lot of the other great things that we do here at Realmar. Plus, there's going to be special guests uh, that we've had on the show joining us there as well. Once again, that's the Body, Soul, and Spirit Expo. For more information, Chandler is the gentleman ch- to contact Chandler Armstrong at www.bodysoulspiritexpo.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Deborah Frew as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go... This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7, 365. Exxon Nation, uh, Deborah Frew is my special guest this hour. Her website is www.internalwilderness.com. Deborah, when you're sitting down doing a reading for someone, um, how can you be sure that the information that you're getting is correct? How do you validate the information? Well, if the um, client isn't forthcoming with a nod of the head or, mm-hmm. or anything like that, then you pretty much have to go with your own uh, gut reaction to what you're looking at and as you're saying it, how it feels. Um, I, I once had a reading uh, by a psychic medium and she went on and on about what I should be doing with my life, but I didn't feel that connection, so I knew she didn't have a connection with me. But that's because I have that extra little, you know, I'm allowing that, um, I'm allowing myself to know these things, which other people, you know, they tend to not do that with themselves. But um, my favorite kind of reading, really, is on the phone with a complete stranger, because you would not believe how many clues you can drop to a reader face-to-face. Hmm. And although I love face-to-face readings, I love to meet new people, there's so many great people in the world, um, I like the challenge of not having any clues. You know, when, you, when you're sitting down and, and doing a reading for someone, how do you get the information? Does it come in your mind's eye, do you get it in your ear? Uh, how does this information come to you? How do you how do you perceive it? Well, it's a little process. First of all, um, when you set down the cards, each of the positions in the way that I use them, each of the positions means something. Mm-hmm. So if this card here signifies you right now in the present moment, then that starts the story. And I watch the story unfold as the different cards appear in the different, you know, predetermined positions um, or the, pre, the, the positions that have meanings to them. And then I just sort of wait until it gels into a story. And what that gelling moment, that's the moment that I feel that sort of ping that I know, okay, I got it now. Let's, uh, let me get into it. Let, let's talk. Is there anything that you see or that you perceive that you will not share with a client? Oh, plenty of things. <laughs> like what? Um, well, for instance, um, there actually is a way to tell when people are going to die. I don't know what that is, but um, I would never learn it anyway because, you know, there you can be wrong. Mm-hmm. You can, and, and the way you can be wrong is, is what a reader is reading is the most, probable future based on actions to this point. Now, I like to look down all the roads. Usually people come to a reader at a crossroads. Right. So I like to look down all the roads and, and say how the energy is setting up in each of those roads so you can make a choice of what you want to do. Maybe you just want to sit still. You know, it's, it's just a matter of um, taking the time to do it and believing that it's not my job to tell people what to do, but let them make a choice based on what's out there. So I won't tell people, for instance, uh, pregnant women have said to me, or women have said to me, am I going to get pregnant? Am Mm -hmm. I going to have a baby? I won't look. And the reason is because I did see once when the first time a woman ever asked me that I looked and I saw that it was probably going to wind up in a miscarriage. Well, you don't tell people things like that. I could be wrong. I could, she may make a choice that takes her down a different road and, Mm -hmm. You know, why should somebody go through life with that hanging over their heads? Everybody has bad news in their life, and certainly they all come to me when they're in it. (laughs) But my job is to look for the shining star or the sun, you know, uh, the sunlight that's 
finally going to shine on your life. And so that's what I do is I walk them through the process of where they are now and how to get to where they want to go. Do you ever feel as if you're a babysitter? (laughs) Well, you know, I did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a lot of very needy clients. Um, people who would call me every day, wow. every single day, as if it would make a difference. They didn't do a thing in their lives to affect any change, and yet somehow the reading would be different. And no, it's never different. Um, and yeah, I got got very tired of being a babysitter, and so I raised my prices really high. Now I only get motivated people. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I've been doing this show now for 20 years, and that's something that I've seen over the years, is that people go to psychics expecting them to do all the work. Oh, Yeah. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. I have been used and used, and I let it happen, but it was a learning curve for me. It was learning how to draw my own boundaries and Mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm here for this, but not that, and to constantly remind people that I'm here giving you tools. If you don't want to use them, don't come back to me. In fact, I tell people, I only want to read for you three or four times a year. So how do we motivate people to to affect their own lives instead of having to depend on people like you, who I must imagine find it very draining. Well, I, I can't say so. I can't say I find it very draining anymore. In the ba- in the past when I was more of a pushover, yeah, mm-hmm. it was very draining. But now, because I'm getting very motivated people, you know, that's it, it works very synergistically. But how to do it on our own, The very first thing you have to do is learn to trust your intuition. I have a free download on my site, three ways that you can improve your intuition right now. And the very first thing is to say to yourself, it's okay. It's okay if I trust my own intuition (laughs) because we don't give ourselves permission. Why not? You know, why, why is it that we have this ability, we have the gift, and yet we... Well, not we, but many people refuse to use it. Again, I think it has to do with, you know, the age that you are, the part of your life that you're in, your focus. You know, if I remember back when I was a young mom and I had four little kids, you know, I was married for a while, not married for a while. It was um, pretty stressful Mm -hmm. for me to actually believe that I was connecting with my intuition as opposed to what was the fastest solution to the problem at hand, I couldn't really tell the difference. I didn't really know if I was following my intuition or not. But looking, kids, but looking, back, or, but looking back over those years, how would things have changed if you would have used your intuition compared to the way that you did it? Oh, well, that's a really, really potent question, and I'll tell you why. I had to make the mistakes that I made. Mm-hmm. So perhaps my intuition would have told me to go down those roads anyway. Could it be, possi- they were de- Could it be possible it, that this was part of the predestined road that you had to take in order to get where you are now? Well, I don't know that my road was predestined, but I think that we all come to our lives with a bag full of problems that we have mm-hmm. to learn to solve. And... You know, another thing that I tell my clients, and this is very controversial, but this it works for me, this, this type of imagery. Okay, we come here, and, you know, this is school. we we got to admit it. If this is not, you know, recess. This is school with a few breaks in between where things are, you know, nice and, and things are going well. But in the meantime, there's all these lessons that we're here and we're learning. And I tell people that the, the person in your life that's making you the craziest, your boss or your neighbor or whomever, That person, before you both came to this earth, is really your closest, best soulmate friend. Because who else would come to earth and shake the voodoo stick at you, put on the uh, costume of the the horrible villain, Mm -hmm. and get give an Oscar-winning performance all to get you to wake up and admit and see the situation and learn to solve it once and for all. The only person who would do that is somebody who loves you. So do you believe that we have this this all planned on who we're going to be in this existence with before we even start it? Yeah, I'd say we're on a script. Well, I'd say it? it's a script that we do ourselves. Then, then what's the difference between this script and predestined 
pre, you know, destiny that we talked about a few minutes ago, and you said you didn't believe in it. Well, I, I just don't believe that there's this um, out, larger force having us learn these oh, okay. lessons. It's, it's us setting ourselves up to learn them. Do you believe in reincarnation? You know, I think that uh, reincarnation and the life that we're living here on mm-hmm. Earth are all metaphors for something else that we can't quite touch. And the reason that I say that is because I can touch that thing when I'm in a psychic state. So I think the, that everything that we can experience is a metaphor. Anything you can measure or sense is a metaphor for something greater. What, what that is exactly, I'm not sure. But in that space, I think we're all one. One of what? Well, I don't know, Rob. I've always wondered my whole life mm. that there are human beings all over this earth, and we all have something in common. We're all human. Right. Yet we don't have, you know, our, our life realities are so different. Mm-hmm. How can that be resolved? And the resolution is, is imagine that you're looking in a mirror, and then you suddenly take a hammer and break that mirror. That mirror is still always a reflection of you in every single shard. But they're all different shapes. They're all in different locations. They're all upside down or right side up. See what I'm saying? I do, but then I have to, that raises a question. If that is the case, what is the reason why we come back? What is the reason why we are here? To me, and this is just me, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't have a movement and I don't want anybody to join my cult. <laughs> what I want to say is... You've got a cult? Is, no, oh. <laughs> not at all. But I just don't want anybody to think that I'm, I'm saying this because I've got the answers and I right. want somebody to follow me. For me, this is my answer. My answer is, um, I'm going to just speak in the first person. I'm here because I chased my ego here. I think that my ego was very enticing and it made me think that my little shard of the mirror was far more important than yours or anyone else's. And my job now, the lessons that I'm here to learn, Mm -hmm. is that that, that, that's not the case. But you have to know it in yourself. That's the hard part. Now, do you think that this applies just to this realm of reality that we're presently in or into the other realms of altered dimensions where there may be, in fact, another Deborah Frew, another Rob McConnell existing? Or do we all act independently of each other? Well, I think we all act independently of each other, but I also think that if you can measure it or sense it, Mm -hmm. so that means that those Debs and Robs are measuring and sensing things, that they fall under the umbrella of being in school. Speaking about school, you, you said that you teach psychic mm-hmm. development. Does everyone have the ability to be a psychic, and is it hard for someone to develop or to enhance their psychic ability? I think that some people are a little closer to it when they come to me for instruction mm-hmm. than others are, and I don't think everybody needs to be there, uh, but I do think that it's a good thing to learn about so that if you're not a person who is particularly sensitive or psychic in this particular life, that um, you would at least understand the people who are. Because in our society, this is just, you know, it's laughed at. But if you were to cross the pond and go to England, Mm -hmm. everybody's got fairies in their backyard. You know, I mean, everybody's got, it's a completely different mindset in England. So it's, you know, it's because we're here and this is the way we see things that I would like to see um, just a little more understanding of how it all works. How long I don't is, necessarily feel everybody can be psychic at all times. Really? Mm-hmm. So, so you know, if you're out uh, shopping with your husband or if you're at an airport, a train station, are you able to open up your psychic ability if you want? And sure, if I w- want to. Would you just... Generally, I don't think about it. <laughs> has there ever been a time when your psychic ability has kicked in on its own and you were... You know, there was an important message that you just had to give to someone. Um, I think that more particularly that would have happened with me, mm-hmm. you know, something that I just needed to know in the sec- right. in that moment, in that second, and I was open to receiving it. But I don't think that I've ever felt like I had to 
you know, pull somebody's collar and say, hey, 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 I have a message for you. You and I have to take a commercial break. When we come back, I've uh-huh. um, got a very, a very important question for you that I'll ask you. It's, right. it's nothing out of the ordinary for you, but are interesting. Uh, it might be very interesting for others to hear your answer. ExoNation, okay. Deborah Fru is my special guest of this hour. Her website is www.internalwilderness.com. And uh, we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Exxon podcast shows are available with our compliments at www.exxonepodcast.com. And for the online version of the X Chronicles newspaper, that is there with the great compliments of our advertisers, www.xchronicles-newspaper.com forward slash publisher. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. In over 36 years in law enforcement, I've learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, extraterrestrials, and UFOs. How we gather that evidence of their existence, preserve that same evidence, and present it to a court of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Come with me on a journey that seeks to prove with undisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Join me, Larry Lawson, host of the Paranormal Stakeout, coming to the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Check out the broadcast schedule for Paranormal Stakeout with yours truly, Larry Lawson, at www.xzbn.net. For more information about me, my travels, and my team, check out our website at www.paranormalfbi.com or join us on Facebook at Florida Bureau of Paranormal. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. X Zone Nation, uh, Deborah Fru is our special guest, www.internalwilderness.com. First of all, Deb, thanks very much for joining us. Always a great pleasure having you on the show. Um, my question to you is how did you feel 10 years ago? The morning of September 11, 2001, were you getting any psychic impressions of what was to happen? I did not. And I was so shocked mm. because I had no forewarning that, I'm not that, you know, I sit around going, well, what's today's sure. foreboding news? But instead that looking back on it, thinking, boy, I really... Nothing happened. Nothing came to me. But, you know, I'm going to tell you that I think that over time that's changed with me. For example, I I don't actively try to predict terror events Mm -hmm. or scary things or, you know, disasters of any sort at all. Right. But about two weeks ago, I started having these thoughts about earthquakes, and I'm thinking, why am I thinking about earthquakes? You know, I, I've been through a couple and I really don't care to go through any more. I don't need that kind of excitement in my life, really. And then we had two in the U.S. in places where there are no fault lines. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So I think over time, it's just I'm just becoming more sensitive to these things. But no, on September 11th, I was um, a speechless. Wow. How can people learn more about developing their psychic phenomenon or their psychic abilities, and how can people uh, find out more about you? 
definitely stop at my website, internalwilderness.com. Um, I've got lots going on there. Boy, I, um, I teach business to people in the metaphysical arts because it's just a difficult thing for a lot of people who do what I do. They don't have that left side of the brain mm -hmm. that's, you know, that likes to do the geeky things. I do web development for metaphysicians, so that's two things that I just off-the-wall sort of things. But I also have the Heavenly Cocktail Hour, where you can join me online, and, and uh, I do readings for everybody that shows up, wow. um, live in-person events, all kinds of things, internalwilderness.com. Deb, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Always a great pleasure talking to you, and I hope that you and I have the pleasure of connecting once again here in the X-Zone. Thanks so much, Rob. It's been great. Take care, my dear friend. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Exo Nation, my guest this hour has been Deb Fru. Once again, if you'd like to contact Deb or if you'd like to find out more about her, her work, where you can listen to her, where you can find her, www.internalwilderness.com. That's www.internalwilderness.com. And, of course, she does private consultations uh, by contacting her through this uh, website. When I come back from the news at six and a half minutes past the hour... Here in the X-Zone, more from the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Karen Forrest about angels. My name's Rob McConnell. Whatever you do, don't go away. We'll be back after the news.